Welcome back to The Edge, everybody. Time for our prep spotlight, and we are joined, as always, by our prep expert, Doug Ritchie. Doug, how you doing? Pretty good. Ready for some hoops. I think uh, we got some coming for the next few weeks. We do. We're going to be well <laughs> hooped up, to be sure, for the next couple of weeks. Also a big uh, week for hockey and wrestling also. We're going to talk about all those things tonight. High school boys basketball playoffs start Tuesday. Girls brackets were announced, however, today. And uh, here's a look at the uh, top couple of divisions. Division One, Pulaski, out to the north. Lots of McCaskill in London. No real surprises here, uh, Doug. No surprises, but what we have to look forward in these teams, Pulaski probably has to hit the pier to get the state. The pier beat Pulaski, Appleton North gets Oshkosh West later probably. They split. Luxembourg Caskill later gets a gritty Notre Dame team that almost knocked off Pulaski Friday. Yeah. New London sent off in a different area, which might help them. Two of their three losses were the LC, and they won't see them for a while. Yeah, so it could be it could be that they get through a little bit more, a little bit of an easier bracket, so to speak, perhaps. Division three uh, looks like there's a lot of teams in Division three with freedom. Chilton, McConnell Falls, Kiwani, Winnebago Lutheran. Uh, and really, the pods are a little bit different in uh, Divisions three and four. That's kind of why you get more. There are more number one seeds, but still, uh, a lot of quality play here, and some teams that can get away. Yeah, we got obviously it looks like we own D three, but the Freedom Chilton might hit each other. Both having fantastic seasons, that's one to look. And then Lords Algoma, Division 4, they've been killing everybody in all divisions this year. They've beaten Division 1 teams. Yeah. And 3, 4, 2, it doesn't matter. They're going to be really tough. Well, Lords and Algoma, as well as Amherst in Division 4, St. Mary Central and Wasaki from our area as well. Let's go back to Division 1, uh, Doug Pulaski. What makes this Pulaski scene so good? And was it a tough choice between them and De Pere for a number one city to take? You know, De Pere beat them. Yeah. But Pulaski's up on him in the FRCC, which is probably the, what gave him the number one seat. So that way I don't think it was a tough choice. But what makes him good is they got a lot of girls that can do things. Brooke Loritz in there getting a little way up. And they got Brittany Wartz that can hit the three ball. They're good defensively too. And But the pure, Atlanta Cotter there with the three-pointer, Jillian Ritchie. That's the matchup really that I, I would love to see because it's going to be tough. Earlier this week, Doug Ritchie went one-on-one with Brooke Loritz from Pulaski. This team, I feel like, out of my high school career, that this team is the closest. We're friends on and off the court. We know what each other's doing. We, like, think alike. We know where each other, each, everybody's going to be at this, like, when we're playing. And it just feels like we're a much closer team. And I think all of us together, we think that we're going to get it done come tournament time. Last time Flasky played in the state tournament was 1996. So are you confident that... Uh... You're going to be in Madison and change that to 2011? Uh, we're very confident. We work. We remind ourselves every day and our team to work hard because we know where we want to get. The beginning of the season, we wanted. We want, that's our main goal to win state or get to state. I think we just want to get to state first, and then. But we're focusing on one game at a time. Well, the other top teams from our area in Division One, Appleton North, the Lightning, they still haven't clinched the FEA from Kimberly and Oshkosh West really yet, but uh, they still get a top seed. Uh, why do they get this top seed? Uh, basically, you've got to go when you got to go, and you've got to do your thing right now without really getting the conferences done. Yep, and they have a one-game lead on Oshkosh West, and that's the difference. That's why it's 1-2. But, you know, if they're 1-2, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference because they're probably going to hit each other. Yep. The thing is, North hasn't lost in, like, three years. I think they got, like, a... <laughs> 14-game winning streak going on now, so they're hot. Yeah, exactly. Well, all right, let's take a look now at Division Two. Division Two, led by Luxembourg Casco. Uh, they've taken on some Division One opponents as well with success this year. Their only loss is to Pulaski, who's, hey, uh, they're pretty good, by yeah. the way. Could this be a Spartans' year? I mean, you know, Lux Casco kind of goes in waves, and this year they've got some good players. You know, it really could. They seem to have it all lined up with their seniors, obviously. Kelsey Jonio there to Van and Plus for a couple. It's going to be really hard for a lot of teams to match them up. And again, Notre Dame, we talked about they might get them. If they get by Notre Dame, they might get Beaver Dam in a, a, a sectional final. Beaver Dam got to the Division One state title tournament last year. Now they're D2. So that, that could be their biggest hurdle coming up. That's part of the switch with the new Division Five. As you saw some other teams do one moving down, there's been a little bit of a shuffling. Yeah, it's so. different teams fall in different areas, and all of a sudden, who are they? We've never seen them before. But <laughs> well, now you see them. Some new matchups. <laughs> All right, let's talk Division Three real quick. Uh, we mentioned before a lot of teams from our area top seeds. Let's talk about Freedom uh, tonight. Nineteen and two overall, game and a half lead over Xavier in the Eastern Valley. Uh, what makes this Freedom team tick? They move the ball up and down the court. They they don't play slow at all. Pressure defense. They got a great player in Katie Goner, and they got a good, pretty good inside outside game. And they just really what they do better than anything is they just make it 
a good looking sloppy if that's possible. Yeah, yeah, sure. They, 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 it's not always pretty, but they just get teams playing out of their comfort level, and they're really good. Well, let's uh, now move to Division Four. And uh, Algoma and Kiwani, of course, battled in conference this year. Algoma's only lost Kiwani, though, is in Division Three for your tournament. And so, what does that say for Algoma? Algoma, we mentioned before, uh, they've played all comers. Yeah, they they pretty much beaten everybody. Yeah, they went to, and they beat Green Bay Preble on the road. Yeah. they also beat the Pier on the road. The Pier's a pretty good squad yeah, as well. Yeah, those two teams are very good. So you're talking about division. Now they drop down to D4, and you know, common sense would say they should roll. The only the only obstacle, obviously. Oshkosh Lord, that's going to be the big game, but Algoma's really good. Yeah, they've got a chance, like you said, to play against some of these bigger schools. How much does that help them once they get to this kind of tournament? Well, I think when they get to the deep in the postseason, when they match up against a really good D4 school, all of a sudden they're going to know, hey, we've been here before, we've been against a good team, and we beat them. Mm-hmm. That's great confidence. So they, Algoma's got a lot of things going for them right now. Well, it should be an exciting time as the girls get going. Uh, that won't be till a week from Tuesday. So that'll be fun. It'll be fun to, uh, to check that out. All right, boys' state basketball tournament gets going this week. We're going to take another quick look at the top seeds uh, here as well. Division One: uh, Appleton East and De Pere, Seymour and Plymouth. Which of these teams, these, these three divisions, Oconto, Amaro, Wrights, Down, Brilliant, North Final, like you see making extended runs? These are all top seeds. They're all good teams. Yeah, but I, I love Appleton East, De Pere. They will probably hit Bayport at some point. And then Seymour. Um, those three teams I really like. I think they got a really good chance in Madison. And you go to D3, Amaro is very good. And Brilliant is very good, but they're both stuck in really difficult brackets. Mm-hmm. They might not get out, but those five schools are, are state tournament worthy. Yeah, we question. called it the group of death last, yes. <laughs> last time when we talked about it on Monday. <laughs> Division four, Bondawal Pesh to go. Uh, GB New Lutheran, and uh, I think uh, NW Lutheran is really primed for a nice one. Yep, they were there last year. That's going to help them this year. They might hit Surin. Surin beat them Surin's last year, or beat them this season already. So the familiarization for New Lutheran might help them. Plus, they've done it before, and that always helps when you know you can do it. Yeah, to players like Kayla Zimmerman and the other guys that have been there yep. before. And that's, you, you got to have some of that experience, really, sometimes to get over the top and to actually get that. Basketball, not the only sport going on this week. High school hockey is headed to Madison as well. And from Irie and Notre Dame, the only team on the boys' state side to qualify for state. I think they are uh, they had an epic battle with Ashwaubenon on this weekend. Though. Only four overtimes. <laughs> they, they got done five minutes ago. We just got the score. <laughs> just in. <laughs> they, they won. They're going to state. <laughs> Uh, they're going to go Thursday and play Marquette at New to Madison. Last year, the Tritons made it to state loss in the semifinals. Uh, this year, hoping to make it to the championship game. On the girls' side, Appleton United is going to be going to state as well. They will take on River Falls Co-op. Uh, that will be in Madison also. That will be at noon. Uh, that will be on Friday. So, And then the, uh, the finals, of course. Uh, on Saturday for everybody, so that should be exciting. All right, big night for a bunch of wrestlers from our area as well. Quite a few newly minted state champions. On the mat, the uh, 68th annual WIA State Individual Wrestling Tournament. Lights were bright on uh, on finals night in D1. It's Appleton's uh, Ryan McQuaid, who won and won 12 last year. And, you know, he was standing on top of the podium again after a 3-2 decision last night. Now to D2 at 112. Rights down junior Brett Dukler is... Uh, Okay, yeah, I'm sure he slept well last night. Gets the 5-3 decision for the state. Oh, yeah, state champs. Love it. D3 at 145. Two local guys going head-to-head. Oshkosh Lords, A.J. Zemke uh, trying to get a perfect season. Coleman's Jake Engels trying to prevent it from happening. But Zemke prevails. 6-4 decision. Second state title for the senior. Here's a look at all of the winners from our area. In Division One. we talked about McQuaid, Thomas Allen from Menasha as well. Brett Buechler as uh, Lucas Lambrick. Cody Nielsen, Jake Morrissey, and uh, Riley Dells are all the Oconto Falls guys. What a great run for Oconto Falls. Uh, and then in Division Three, Chet Burr from Coleman, as well as A.J. Zenku, we mentioned him, Austin Ebert, Casey Haas, and Ben Tauschen. So all of those guys are state champions. Congratulations to all of them. State uh, team wrestling. It's going this weekend as well. Coleman in that is, uh, so that's going to be interesting. That's to nothing surprising with Coleman. Yeah, they don't want to have a tournament at state with all Coleman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, we got plenty of hoops coverage coming up this week, particularly online. We mentioned that before. And, uh, Doug, you'll have uh, full analysis coming up tomorrow? Tomorrow night, full analysis on the girls' brackets and who I think is going to go to state. Ooh. More than one team and. Uh, It'll be interesting. Uh, there's some really great matchups coming up, so it's going to be tough to pick. The Doug Ritchie predictions That's are right. going to be there. I'm never wrong. <laughs> He's never wrong unless they're not right. If they're wrong, you get your money back. Go online, fox11online.com. Game of the week coverage. You get the highlights. We'll give you scores and schedules. Uh, you can get everything online right there at fox11online.com. Doug, thanks so much for being with us. 